Dave's host, me, Ghosty. And I'm Extra. And we are back at it again with um, Child Savior. Extra is pulling in for Noir because Noir's schedule is all fucked up and weird. So we're starting off where we left off on our original recording. This is the second attempt of me and him actually yeah. recording again. And we left off on Chapter 9. Astro, do you have a link to the chapter itself? Yeah, I, I'm I'm on it right now. I'm I'm on it right now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and read first because poor Axra read first last time. <laughs> so Zach's point of view. We had been sitting in the cafe for an hour when Kara looked around. Where's Kayla and Jamie? I thought they'd be back already. She said, and I frowned, looking around. Susanna got up and hid it outside and looked around. It's called a fucking call. Just. Just saying, just, you know, just putting that out there. I can't see them out there, she said, and I got up. We hid it outside, and there was no sign of either of them. I heard Kara whimper softly behind me, and I sensed her about to go off. I grabbed her hand, pulling her back over to me. I'll find them. You stay here and look after the kids, I said, and she opened her mouth to argue when I covered it. Nah, no arguing. I've made up my mind, and I'm not changing it, I said firmly, and she nodded slowly. I got everyone back to the house and dragged the troops, and I, and I stared, stared, not started, stared, <laughs> stared working on what a plan, what the plan would be. Y you know, Google, you know, Microsoft Word has a wonderful autocorrect feature that I'm sure you enabled it ever, every once in a while. No, no, it's, it's just like, even Microsoft Word would be like, what the hell is this shit? <laughs> oh, God, there's a sick bird for this. There is a sick bird for this. So I didn't know who, so they gave me a boring white girl to roast, and I went to Google, and then Google sent me to Bing, and then Bing sent me to Ash Jeans, and even Ash Jeans didn't know who the fuck this bitch was. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh well, that we weren't in, we weren't sure exactly where we were, but I had a sneaky suspicion that Kara's brothers were behind this. I grabbed my axe and looked at the others. Keep track of my position, I'll contact you if I need backup, I said and they nodded. I headed off to the place where they had been keeping care of, but it was empty. I headed off till I found another building. I headed over and heard Kayla's voice. I smiled, creeping into the building. Uh, once they walked off and I froze. <laughs> you may be laughing now, but you won't be soon, I murmured. I looked over at Jamie, who stirred slightly. He groaned softly. Where are we? He murmured. My uncles have us, I said, softly trying to get out of the chains, but fell down again. Are you okay? She yes, asked, looking over at me. I'm chained up, I said, chained up. I'm not, why are you? He asked, you're not a threat. I am, I've got powers. Random things. Mm. I said, try it. <laughs> I said, try to get out of the chains. I stopped after a while, panting. I give up, I'm only exhausting and hurting myself. I said, so <laughs> Then he came over behind me and sat me up against him. Don't give up yet, we have to get out of here, he said, and I sighed. Let's just bust our way out of here, he said. What? Are you kidding? This is the first class way. Why did I... <laughs> <laughs> the first class why to die? <laughs> seven seven <Stop>. whys to die? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it sounds like just like the country version of way. Just like, that's the first class why to die. <laughs> Oh dear god. What the fuck, honestly? <laughs> you need to come up with a plan. My my grandpa always told me Sensorisi a pianificare. What do you see? Per pervade de fallir? I don't know. I don't know what that says. It's it's supposed to be Italian, but if you read it through Google Translate, I bet you the first thing would come up is a customer. 
I said. He nodded slowly. What? So what's the plan, then? He asked. Uh, I haven't gotten that far yet. I asked. I said, looking at the floor. That's okay. He said, we'll work one out. Ugh. Yeah, just, you know, because fucking suddenly she has powers. That'd have been nice information to know before. <laughs> we need to come up with a plan of attack. I've got a plan. Attack! That's not, a, that's uh, not a very effective plan. We sat there in silence, thinking of a way to get out of this. After a while, I looked at Jamie. I've got it. It's risky, but it might just work, I said, and he nodded. Hey, idiots! I yelled, and my uncles came to the door. If you were talking to us, you addressed us as uncle, Uncle Stefano said. Whatever, bitches, I murmured. Look, you let Jamie go, and I'll give myself to you, too. <laughs> I said that Jamie stared at me shocked. Okay, let's go to our office and talk more about this deal with you two. Uncle Zoe said taking the chains off me and they dragged us to their office, locking the door behind him. We sat down and I looked at him look at them, trying not to show my sight any signs of fear. Uncle Stefan was stepped forward looking at me. So would you give yourself up to him to go free? He said and I nodded. He's not any use to you. I am. I am. That's why you keep coming after me. I said, that's true. He said nothing. But how do we know this isn't so he can tell Cap Carla so she'll come and get you? Uncle <laughs> Sonobi asked Browning. Do, do I have to go do all your thinking? You move me like you always do, I said. And Uncle Stefano nodded. The kids got the point. He said, and I held, <laughs> he held my breath, hoping that he would let Jamie go. Jamie wasn't so sure. Don't do it. He said, and we all looked at him. Why? I was shocked. You let her go. If you keep her, her mama's friend will hunt you down. And she, <laughs> she'll find you no matter what. You can take me. My parents wouldn't care. He said, and I bit and let it. Hmm. That's true as well. Now, do we take Kayla or you? Uncle's, uncle's that don't be murdered. Looking at Uncle Stefano. Uh, okay. <laughs> World, world's most dumbest villain word goes to. You need to find time to be a dumbass Watching Rush Limbaugh's they're going to class When your country needs you, you tell them that you're through Cause you don't like the bill they just passed You need to find time to be a dumbass Okay, when you read, he'll find you no matter what, there's a K-N like, she didn't even bother to put the O.W. by it. <laughs> oh my god, it's it's just like, it's the dumb Italian uncles, it's just... <laughs> what are you? An idiot sandwich. Idiot sandwich what? An idiot sandwich, Chef Ramsay. One of them, one of them is Uncle Daddy. So... Because one of them is actually Kayla's father, if I remember correctly. It's the, it's the dunkle. <laughs> the dunkle. Alright. All right. Um, there was silence for a while, and all that could be heard was us breathing slowly. I looked at Jamie, and he was watching my uncles. It was then when it was then that we heard laughing. You think you can just get away with this? A voice said darkly. I looked at Jamie, who moved over to me, standing by me. How about you take me rather than them? Hmm? It'd be more fun, the person said. Who the fucking hell are you? Uncle Zanabee hissed. A figure jumped down from the roof in a black coat. Clo bleh, bleh, cloak. Jamie pulled pulled me away from the person. From the person. You two should know better than the mess with the person growled softly pulling out an axe, and I guessed, Is that? I started to say in the interrupt. Yeah, it's me, Kay. Just stay back. This ain't gonna be pretty, Zach said, and I nodded and backed away. I think I think this chapter's what broke you. The last go around, if I remember correctly. The first words broke me. I was already broken when it started. <laughs> it's just the writer and he dies a little bit. I, 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 I'm, I'm a shell of my former self. Oh no, my poor Axera. <laughs> oh poor Gan has to read this bullshit. <laughs> He doesn't get paid oh, enough for this shit. Oh, Gen's already crazy. 
Alright, uh... So let's see, Zach, we're running his fingers along the blade of Zach's. I would normally deal with one person at a time, but I might just do you both at the same time, okay? I mean, does your dick happen to extend through their dick at the same time? <laughs> do you use do you use the other person's dick as a condom? Darts has got two dildos. <laughs> Holy shit! Two <laughs> spikes. Two spikes to build those of that. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. Since you are brothers and would hate to watch the other. Since you are brothers and would hate to watch the other one suffer first, he said, smirking. That axe won't do us both, Uncle Zanami said. Really? I'll show you what I'm capable of doing with it. <laughs> she said. Pulling out another axe. This is the same sharpness. Now watch closely. He said, and they nodded. He walked outside and over to a tree. It wasn't very thick, but it had some thickness to it. <laughs> is it thick or not thick? <laughs> the worst axe moron in history. It wasn't thick, but it had some thickness to it. <laughs> Just like. <clears throat> what even? Just, just say a medium-sized tree, a fairly large tree. <laughs> I'm so peeved. Right. You are triggered. <laughs> he hit. He hit the tree four times before it came crashing, crashing down. And they stared at him. If you try, if you tried that, you asked what you want, right? He asked, and they nodded. Thought so. Not mine. I could do twenty trees before it. Before it starts to get blunt, but I don't. Anyway, I don't have to use just my axe. <laughs> what could you use? Uncle Stefano asked. See that wall? He asked, pointing to one of the one of the wall. Not one of the walls, just one of the wall. Like you know, <laughs> one, one of the wall. <laughs> like it's the same wall, but it's one of them. <laughs> just, just a single brick. It's just a single brick. <laughs> He just punches a brick out of the wall. <sighs> and they nodded. Four hits and I break it, he said, walking over to it. Bullshit! You wouldn't even crack it after four hits, Uncle Stefano said, and Zack raised an eyebrow and then slammed his fist against the wall, and it cracked right through the wall. They stared at him in shock, afraid of what would happen to them now. He walked over, grabbing them both, dragging them back inside. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> She's really bad with writing villain characters. She's just bad. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> he pushed them into the office and glared at them. Now for me to deal with you both, he growled. He punched them both hard and I hit the wall. They both sat up and looked at him. They both looked at each other getting up, then they ran at him from both sides. He moved and then they crushed into each other. Let's play some chicken with the villains on. Right? <laughs> he, he grabbed Uncle Stefano and punched him in the stomach before throwing him aside. He did the same to Uncle Zanobi. They lay on the ground and coughed up blood. They, not they li lied, not they laid on the ground, they lay on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Zach looked at Jamie and I. You two wait outside of the room. This last part is going to be pretty, he said, and we nodded leaving. We waited for a bit, and there was an ill-sounded crack twice. We gasped, and then Zach walked out. We looked in, and they were on the ground bleeding a lot and badly beaten up. He had just broken their spines and beat them. Someone shot a gun, and I screamed, covering my ears. What's wrong, Jamie asked. I hate what noises, gunshots, cars backfiring, fireworks, everything like that. I whimpered and I looked, looked at each other sadly. Zach picked me up, holding me close. Age took us out of the building and out of the area before anyone found us. I held on to Zach tightly. I was glad he came. I didn't want to do our plans. Jamie stayed close by, by us, looking around for danger. I just, just want to point this out. 
You you can reword most of this. You can reword most of this and just make this chugging tin erotica. <laughs> I mean, I write porn in my spare time, but come on, man. <laughs> oh my god. Just, just, just the wording of everything. Just like whimper. It, it sounds like one giant sex scene. <laughs> She's like, hey, honey, let me slam my axe across your back. <laughs> Choo choo, motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god. She's we just so. She's just so bad with writing villain characters. <laughs> She offends me! <laughs> Alright. We headed back to the house and Carly was inside waiting for us. We found them, she said, running over and hugging Kate. I mean, gently, and then turned. Uh, 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 and then I gently, and then turned. And. <laughs> gently! <laughs> I, I gently. <laughs> How do you gently? How do you gently and then turn? What the <laughs> hell? I, uh, <clears throat> and then turned to Jamie and hugged him. Yeah, your brothers had him both, I said, and she frowned. Don't worry, they won't be coming back for us anytime soon, I said softly. Yeah, if they don't learn now, they'll, they'll even more. No offense to your family name, stupid than I originally said. Jamie said to her smile, Don't worry, Jamie. I know if they're both stupid and they have ruined what could have been their reputation in this family name, but that's been done and so they will suffer the consequences, she said, and he nodded, smiling. I put Kay down as Susanna ran out and hugged her and Jamie tightly. Oh my god, I was so worried about you both, she said, and they smiled. Let's go up to my room and watch a movie for a while, White. Well, to give Jamie and I a chance to calm down. Kay said, and they nodded, going up the stairs. Oh my god. I smiled, watching them race up the stairs. I felt someone hug me from, be from behind, gently. So you showed them who's boss? Kara asked softly, and I nodded. Yeah, I showed them. I murmured as she came around next to me. I wrapped my arm around her, keeping her close. So you gotta tell me what happened, she asked as we walked off. You sound like Saria. She always wants to know what happens on my jobs, I said, smiling. She giggled, and I looked at her. What? I asked. You'll see. She said, pulling me into the lounge. I looked up, and then Saria, Saria was sitting on the couch with Rose and the kids. Rag was going through checking them off the list with Time, Fletch, Brew, and Formax help. What the devil is going on? I asked, and Rag looked up. Oh, it's dangerous for the kids to stay in Chuggington at the moment, so they brought the rest of them here. He said, and I looked at Surya, who smiled at me. Joe didn't even bother asking. One, Kara had already asked, and two, what the hell? <laughs> I said, and she smiled. So, you tell what happened? She asked, and I nodded. Yeah, alright, I said, sitting down. She moved over very well, gently. Tell everything, from start to end, she said, and I nodded, and I told her everything that had happened with her brothers. We were sitting there talking when we heard a thud upstairs, and we all looked at each other. We raced upstairs to the bedrooms. Kids, are you alright? Kara asked, opening the door to see the three of them on the floor laughing. What happened? Kara asked, now confused. Kayla sat up, sat up and looked at us finally. We were watching the movie, but we were tired from the tournament and from being with my uncle, but the three of us started to fall asleep. When we kind of did, when we did, we kind of fell off, fell off the couch. She said, and they started to laugh again. Yeah. Fell off the couch. Uh, they fell, they of. fell off. So <laughs> fell off the couch. <laughs> Not off the couch. Of the couch. <laughs> I want to throw a fucking thesaurus at this bitch's face. I really do. <laughs> because there's so many ands. You know, if I showed my INRW teacher this shit, she would be so fucking pissed off. Oh dear God! Oh. If you showed if you showed any English teacher this, they would. Oh my God! Oh yeah. 
they, they, uh, they would have they would have a gun to their head in five seconds. Let's just say that much. Exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> We're awake now, Jamie said, smiling. Yeah, but sore, Susanna murmured, mur mur giggling. We looked at each other before looking back at the Kara smiled, watching them. Well, as long as they're okay, she said, and I nodded. Tyson walked over, climbing on Kay's back. I stay with you, he asked softly, and Kay smiled. All right, he, she said, and he dived into her, onto her lap. We shut the door and headed back downstairs, and I sighed softly. I wasn't going to rest very well at the moment. I was, I was too worried about the others. I had to come up with a way to make sure they were going to be all right when I couldn't watch them every second of the day. I wasn't going to let them get the better of me. I'm, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna say this. In a normal book, in, in, in a normal story, in something that was well written, you, you'd you read it again. You, you'd read it again, and you'd appreciate all the extra intricate details that you find just reading it again. Just all, all the different stuff. You read this once more. And you start to question yourself each and every word because you notice even more errors than you did before. Yeah. You know, when I had read through this the first time, um, I had read I had read through this when I was first in a relationship with her. Oh my god. Just at the time, it seemed like a really good idea, so I was like, wow, it has a really good premise to it. And then I get to do the let's reads, and I really pay attention to the errors, I'm like, man, she's stupid. Say that much. Uh -huh. Alright, next chapter. Who wants to start off on this chapter? Oh, well, you just finished off, so... Alright. <clears throat> There, try that fletch, Zap called it, and I nodded in, nodded, turning on a switch. It works, Zach, I called back. He smiled, and I got off the, and got off the ladder, and I walked out. With these new security cameras, no one will get in or out without my knowing, he said, and I smiled. And no one will know they're here, because they're hidden, I added. I added, and Zach nodded. Time walked uh, inside and walked up to Kay's room. She walked into her room, and then two of them came out and ran down the stairs. Bye, Mama! Kay called and then Kara waved. Where, where are you two going? Zack asked out. Tang Ty, Ty yelled as the door shut behind them. They got in their car and they drove off. Zack and I looked at each other. We both had the same idea at the same time. We grabbed our keys and followed after them. It wasn't that we didn't trust Time with Kay. We were worried something would happen to them both. Time so was following her and I frowned, picking up the speed and pulling down a side street. I rolled my eyes. You follow behind her. I'll go the other way. Jack's, Zach said over the radio. Got it, Zach. And I said, and pulled down the street, time to. <laughs> I look. <clears throat> I looked around and saw Tyne ahead of me. I sped up following behind her. She pulled out on the other, on another street, and Zach goes in front of her. I smiled, knowing Tyne would be pissed off. <laughs> I. Mm, I saw Kay look back, and she pointed to me. And Tyne looked behind her, seeing me. She frowned and pulled away down another side street. Zach and I followed up behind her. Hey, Kato, you know what their problem is? Zach asked over the radio. No idea. I'm not going to stop until I find out what's going on, I said. I agree, Zach said. And we pulled off into another street, keeping watch on them. After a while, Tyne pulled up at the harbor and they walked over to a speedboat and got on it. And Tyne started it up taking off. Zach and I headed over there where Kara's dad was. He was taught watching them as they raced off. Do you know where they're going? He asked. No, sorry. Sorry, Giovanni. We were wanting to follow them, but I didn't think they would go this far. As I said, take my other speed. Do other others? <laughs> <laughs> Not my other speedboat, my other, other speedboat. Next to the speedboat, that's next to my speedboat, twice removed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
That's still funny. It's still funny reading it a second time. <laughs> no, no, not that speedboat. This speedboat. The one with the, the you know, the one with the sexy lady on it. <laughs> My other other speedboat. The one that has all the porn on it. <laughs> yeah, just don't look in the glove compartment. <laughs> you might find a little surprise in there. A salty surprise. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can keep going with other other speedboat jokes, but oh god. <sighs> we are uh, so far he, down the rabbit hole. He said we not going off. We followed along behind them without knowing until we saw them stop at an island. We stepped near them and got off the boat. We looked at each other and shrugged, running off following them. Okay, I have a big issue with this because my biggest thing is ge geography, right? I know mm -hmm. for a fact that there is not another island near I Italy at all. Unless we're talking them being in Africa somewhere. It's just like the, from what I remember seeing on a map, the closest thing I can remember to Italy is Cyprus. And that's miles and miles away. You would not take a sea you would not take a speedboat to Cyprus. I just I don't understand, and this breaks me fucking logically. It's like, I know for a fact that if she's taking geography, she knows that there's not another island for miles, unless they're heading towards where you said, or they're heading towards Africa. That's it. Italy sits in the Mediterranean. And suddenly Italy is its own island? What the fuck? This <laughs> is like an alternate reality where Italy is just a whole bunch, like, Italy is just Japan or Hawaii, it's just... Oh. Uh, oh. Okay, so you read that paragraph, right? Huh? You read that paragraph, right? You read the rest of that. Pass? Yeah. Okay. We eventually slowed down, and then we were hit by a shockwave, and we looked at each other. We ran off towards where it came from when we heard talking. Wow, that's amazing! What else can you do? We heard Kay ask. A lot more time, Tide's voice came, and we looked past some trees and saw Tiny Kay in a clearing. God, I want to yawn, but I can't. We watched him, and Tyne moved her hand, creating a red ball. She shot, she shot it at it in front of her, causing it to explode, and everything went dark overhead. Now get behind me, she said, and Kay did that. She moved her hands, making the dirt in, fr in front of her to rise up. In front of her rise up. She smiled, moving her hands around, causing causing it to turn into a sandstorm. Zack and I looked at each other. Did you know she could do that? Zack asked, and I shook my head. Time suddenly destroyed the sandstorm. All right, you two, I know you're here, she said, and she turned around. How did you follow me here? We sighed, walking over. Giovanni gave us a speedboat, I said, and Kay rolled her eyes. He always wants to know where I go, he said softly. Only because we get worried, I said, but the question is, what the hell are you doing, and where did those powers come from? I'm asking myself the same exact fucking question. You know, when... I kind of expected, like... We said walking over. Giovanni gave us a speedboat. It's just like Giovanni gave us his other other speedboat. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it goes from being about Zach and Kara to being about time. I don't have the time for this. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, getting back on track, 
Zack asked, turning to Tyne. Tyne went silent and looked at the ground. Kay walked over, hugging her. She'd rather not say it's not really nice, Kay said softly, and we looked at Kay. Zack looked up at Tyne. Really? Seriously, sweetie, you can tell us. I don't care how it happened, I just need to know you're okay, he said, hugging her gently. She gulped, nodding slowly. He sat down, keeping Tyne behind her, leaning, leaning back into him. It's alright. Daddy's got you, he whispered, rocking her gently. Kay sat on my lap, leaning in into me, sighing softly. She looked around the place, and and Zack made her look at him. There's no one here, Tyne. We're the only ones here. He said, no, he'll find me if he wants to. She said softly, who will find you? What does he want with you? I asked, frowning. Tyne opened her mouth, and there was suddenly a huge wind that hit the island, and she froze. She pulled away from Zack and, and ran off through the trees. Zack got up. Got up as I did, and I put Kay on my back as we ran off following Tyne. The wind grew stronger the further the further we got, slowing us down a bit. Tyne got through to the other side of me, arrived a minute later. There was sand flying everywhere, creating a storm. Don't you dare, I heard Tyne yell as she jumped, jumped at someone. They fell down and the storm stopped suddenly. Get off me, you bastard, the person, the person growled, throwing her off. Tyne landed on her feet and looked at him. Don't do anything. I didn't say anything to that. She begged, and a man stopped and glared at her. He walked over to her slowly. You, you bitch. You went, you went to though, just cause your boss wanted to know. He hissed in her ear. You don't say a word to them about any of this. Kay gasped, jumping off my back and jumping at the guy, knocking him over. You leave her alone. He snapped. Kay, no. <laughs> Tyne said, and Kay looked at her. He, whoever he is, has no right to do this to you. She said sternly. The guy grabbed Kay, holding her away from her. Hey, put me down, she growled. Please, Uncle, leave her alone, Tyne begged. And he shot a blast, hitting her away. She knows the story, right? He yelled, and she nodded. Then she dies, he stopped. No, take me and leave her. She can't, she didn't, she can't do anything to stop you, she said. And he dropped Kay, grabbing Tyne. You, my dear, are on thin ice, he growled before disappearing. <laughs> Zack and I ran over him and looked at her shocked, and she went silent. Kay got up and walked over to her, holding her close. You tell them. He won't know if you tell them. Tyne, Tyne said softly, and she nodded. We sat down, leaning on a tree, and Kay sat down in front of us. Tyne walked off, resting her head on a tree, looking up, looking at the ground. Oh, Jesus Christ. And we only have two more paragraphs for this chapter. Oh. <laughs> How, how long have we been doing this? So far? Um, it's past the 20 minute mark, so... Alright. Let's finish strong! Um, Alright, so this thing's not... This kind's not like most of you. She's like Mama and I. She has a power, but it's more powerful than us, too. She said it's softly we nailed it. She's had power since I was a weak. She was a weak hold. She was taken and given them. She said, "In fact, found taken from her parents." Yes, no, from her mama. Her father died when she was born. Before she was born, her uncle took her from her mama. She said, "So that guy stole time from my mom." I said, "She got it." All right, go on. I said. Anyway, once he told her, she, he took her to his place. He had been running tests since he, he found out her, her mama was pregnant with her. He killed her father, knowing she stop him from taking time. So he got time and then started testing things on her. One thing that he tested on her first were her powers. Were the powers. <clears throat> she took that test well and the plan was when she gets older the power increased but it didn't work that way. She started running some sand through her fingers. So what went wrong, Zach cast? She took the power she was supposed to but when she was three the powers increased too much and since then the power gets more every... It gets more... <sighs> It's more every day, and when she gets annoyed like before, they increase double the amount. Time's going to eventually have too much power than she can control. And the, that's what she's got me here for. To help her be able to control them better, she said. Alright, but you, you said it wasn't nice, I said. And she looked at the ground. What happened that you're not telling us? Jack doesn't. She said, the process of the at the power is given to her damaged part of her brain. She literally dearly kid to everyone in her family. She can't control herself if she gets annoyed. She will kill everyone who is in her reach if she gets annoyed. And if she gets too annoyed, she'll, 
Well, it just won't be pretty, she said, and she was kind of, how do you mean, I asked. She literally destroy herself inside out, she said, and looked, looked at her. So what makes her so dangerous when she gets annoyed? Jack asked, the powers controlled her mind. They controlled every part of her. She had an accident a while ago that caused major, that caused, that caused major bleeding internally from the powers being too much to handle. Especially when she can't determine how much power she'll get in time. She said, and we looked down, looked at each other before looking at Tiny, who was calling at the tree. The bastard ruined me, she thought, and Kate looked at her. Oh, Tiny. He said, I'm Tiny. You better settle down, she said, pointing to her, and she looked at herself, and her hands were glowing. My damn uncle did this to me. He's made me a monster. He took me for a mother, she has. I can't control this anymore. She yelled, holding her head. She got out of the way, and we backed up, and she fell into her knees. Her hair, and her hair turned black the night. Her jeans and shirt turned into a black dress with a with silk on the back. She screamed and came held back, not wanting to watch. This went for a few minutes before she it stopped, and time looked up, stood up, looking at herself. She looked up at us, growling, and danger flashed across her eyes as the wind picked up. Her hands, she raised her hand, creating a black mist around her hands. It was another reason when her host started glow red. Glow red, and then she blacked out. This is like... This is like titanic... Titanic levels of stupid. If, 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 if you ever... If you ever watched that John Tron video... Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's... It's about that much levels of... Levels of stupid with the writing when it... Comparison... To that game. And then it has the food fight level action. Yes. <laughs> without without Charlie Sheen and all these famous actors. No, no, no! You just throw Kara there. Have her rewrite the entire of food fight. It oh, God. To... You can't correct a piece of shit once it comes comes out as a piece of shit. It just doesn't work <laughs> that way. <laughs> Tom Zach yelled, running over and pulled pulled her onto his lap. Her clothing went back to normal, and she groaned up, looking at her penny. Save me, please. She begged, looking at him gently, and he looked at, up at me, and I stared at her before walking over slowly. It's all right, baby. I got you. He said, holding her closer against me. Kay hold my hand and whimpered. Don't stop her uncle from hurting her, right? She asked, looking at me. Hopefully, I said, nodding, and she sighed, leaning on me. Mama will help, she said softly, and Zach stood up. Of course she will, he said. Flit, take Kay back to the other boat. I'll take Tyne back on the one we came in, he said, and I nodded. Tyne whimpered softly, holding Zach crying, tightly crying softly. He carried her back to the boat, and we headed off back across the ocean to the harder harbor where Giovanni was waiting for us. What's happened, he asked, running over. Long story, we just need to get her home, Zach said, and he nodded. We headed back to the house where Kara walked out out of the kitchen and froze staring at us. Is she alright? She said, running to over to us. Not really. Zach murmured, sitting on the couch, and Tyne held him tighter. tighter. <laughs> we told Kara what was wrong, and she frowned. Well, we can't let that happen. We have to stop this before anyone gets hurt, she said, and we nodded. You don't let him kill me, Tyne whispered. Don't worry, Tyne, we won't. Kara whispered, stroking her hair. There was a knock at the doors a minute later, and I opened them to see Callie and Jackman standing there. Hey, what are you two doing here? I, I asked. We came to check on you all. We saw you left, and we know it was getting dangerous, Jackman said. Is Tyne heard her upset? Callie asked, looking at him. Yeah, how'd you know? I asked. I sense it. She said, walking past me in the lounge and over to Tyne. Jackman followed me into the lounge, sat up, sat down, and we told them everything that had been happening. We were busy talking. We didn't know, see what was coming next. We heard a window smash, and we all sat up and saw a window near us broken. We looked around and then followed along behind him with Callie. We stopped after a while, seeing Tyne at a park on the ground, bleeding badly. Tyne, Callie yelled, running over and fixing her up gently. She got her side fixed up, and Tyne glanced at her, and I frowned. Callie, get away from her, I yelled, and Callie looked at me confused. What? She asked, get away from Tyne, I yelled, but it was too late. Tyne jumped at Callie and knocked her down. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's fine. Oh. 
Oh, oh, shall we continue or end it here? Well, let's end it here for now. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my other other speedboat and get away from this ship. All right, y'all. We will see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice living life like everything was a party? Only 18 years deep and now we're getting started. Finish line clear so we focused on the target. Wouldn't it be nice if we saturate the market? And wouldn't it be great if we could just simply leave and never think about calm down or act your age? I say hey, hands up, the record play.